Hello everyone and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. This is Colin and we're going to start our playthrough of Tavarua. This game is published by Far Off Games, designed by Cody Miller. Now this game was lent to me by Board Online, Board Offline. The channel's awesome. The guy's name is Baker. He has a gr he has a great channel. I've actually watched a bunch of his channels. He just did uh, a bunch of his videos. He just did a video about Charterstone. And yeah, I'm really, I love his channel. So make sure to check it out. We're doing a game swap. We did this with Atlantis Rising. So I did a playthrough of Atlantis Rising, lent him the game. He did one. And then he sent me that back and gave me Tavarua. So I'm going to do this playthrough. And then unfortunately, I have to give it back to him because I really like this game. Uh, it's a game about surfing, you guys, surfing, which is perfect because yesterday it snowed like 14 inches in Minnesota and I only have a shovel and it took me forever to shovel it out. And when I was done shoveling it, I played this game and I felt like I was on the ocean. <laughs> I was going, wait, why do I live here in Minnesota? <laughs> so yeah, this is my, hey, I'm pretending I'm on vacation, even though I'm not. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to set up the game. We're going to do a solo playthrough. We're actually going to do the com campaign version of the game, but I'm going to do the, I think it's the third game in the set or the fourth. I think, it, yeah, it's going to actually be the fourth game in the campaign set because that's when you kind of start seeing how the whole game works. It's going to have two AIs. It's going to be fun. Um, but if you want to just jump into seeing how the game plays, just go to the videos below us on the playlist and let's get going. I also want to mention if you want to learn how to play this game competitively, so multiplayer, uh, Board Online, Board Offline has a great tutorial video of how to play this game that way. So I'm going to just show you how to play solo. He's got stuff for solo and for competitive. First thing you want to do is set up your board. Now, when you do this, you'll also place your wave tiles. And then what we're going to do is we're going to roll a die for each one of these wave tiles and then place it on that specific spot. So starting here on number six, we'll give this one a roll. It's a three. And we'll do the next one. Now, they technically say you can do this all at one time and just place them randomly. But I prefer doing one at a time just because that way you don't try and uh, game the system, so to speak. So I'm putting all of these here like so. And then what I like to do, that was a six, I believe. What I like to do, because these tiles are two-sided, you can actually flip the ones over for the places that the waves are breaking. So if you know anything about surfing, which I'll tell you right now, I don't because, hey, I live in Minnesota. <laughs> we don't get a lot of surfing in our 10,000 lakes, okay? Yeah, I know how to swim. I don't know how to surf. But apparently, <laughs> when you try and catch a wave, the wave needs to be breaking. If it's an unbroken wave, you can't catch it. How you know if it's a breaking wave is if the number is equal to or greater than the number over here on the right side. So this is a breaking wave versus this one. You see how this is a six and this is only a three? That's an unbroken wave. We can't catch that one, but we can catch this one. So to help yourself, you can flip those tiles over. So you see that five is greater than the four. We can flip that one, two, no, nope. okay. The six, yes, and the six, Yes. So those are all the waves that we can potentially catch if we were out in the channel here and it was our turn and we could try and catch the wave. Next, you want to set up your scoring board. What will happen is every time you complete a run, and let's say you completed it successfully or even maybe even wiped out, you're still going to get a score by the judges. What happens is you count up all of your points, and then down here you look at the points that you've earned. So if I have earned five points, I place one of my scoring tokens in the 2.0. I got a 2.0 out of 10. Yeah, that's not very good. Hopefully I don't do that. Hopefully mine are more up here. But you also could potentially have more than one type of surfboard because you've got short boards and long boards. So you're going to see on the track we'll have different tokens denoting our, the AI's scores and my scores. And at the end of the game, we'll look at the two highest scores that you have for your long boards and the two highest for your short boards and compare them to the AI. Next, you're going to grab your surfer board card. Now, depending upon the challenge that you do, you might have to choose either your short board or your long board. The challenge that I'm going to show you, I'm going to be using both boards. So I think I'll start with the long board, just because I find the long board a little bit easier. I'm going to place my balancing token right in the center. And so that means that when I jump onto a wave, I will start here in the center of the board. Yeah, but that won't last long. <laughs> the waves and then what I'm trying to do, my maneuvers might change that on here. And if ever I fall off of the actual board, I wipe out. Of course, that's not going to happen, right? <laughs> so since I chose the long board, 
I will grab my long board token and my meeple and I'll place them on the board. I'll also keep my scoring tokens handy for the short board and the long board because I will need them throughout the playthrough. I will place my surfer right here on the shore. And so during the first round, I can start swimming out into the channel and then go and try and catch a wave. But as you can see, my meeple has to be laying down on my surfboard because I'm not, I'm not actually surfing. When I'm surfing, I'll be up like this and I'll be going on the uh, actual wave over here. Oh yeah. Next, make sure to grab all of the tokens that we have here. So we have the uh, barrel tokens, you have the perfect tokens, and there's more than this, I'm just showing you a smattering of them. The hang 10 tokens, which you can only get when on a long board, and your stoke tokens, aka your energy or your excitement of, and it can be used to modify cards. The AI can potentially earn perfect tokens and these barrel tokens, but they can never earn hang 10 or stoke tokens. The next thing we need to talk about is the campaign itself for solo mode. So in the solo mode for this game, you are one of the top 50 surfers in the world. You are set at number 50 for rank and your goal is to get to number one. What you're going to do is you're going to have different events from January through December and each one, if you complete them and you complete them in, uh, in a way that you move up ranks, once you move to rank one, you win the game. I have already completed on my own the January, February, and March events. We're going to do the April event. Now you can see I've unlocked or I've checked off these two spots because I have moved down in rank from 50 all the way to 37. Because I did that and I've crossed these two out, oh, I forgot to cross out another one, I got to grab a specific stoke card. So normally in the competitive mode, you can use stoke tokens to purchase stoke cards, but in the solo campaign version, you don't get stoke cards until you move up specific ranks, and then you get those cards. But the most that you can get is three of each type. The two that I'm grabbing are the jet ski, which you can see here, and then call it. I forgot about, I just earned the call it in the last month, so I forgot to check this off. Now, those cards stay with me until I use them, but they are one-time uses and then they're gone from the campaign and I have to earn them as I move up this rank track. But if I don't use them, I can continue to get more cards. So do, when I do use them, I need to check off and say spent A, spent A right here. Here are all the different events for the different months. So I've already completed the longboard contest, the shortboard contest, and one of my favorites, the photo shoot, which is kind of cool. Let's take a closer look at April, the month that we're going to do in this playthrough. The name of our event is going to be the Combined Contest Rip for Charity. So we're doing this for charity, but we're also doing it as a contest to get other people excited about surfing. We have some special rules about the AI. The AI will switch boards after completing a wave. Now what we have to do is we have to set up the wave deck. And right here it tells us the different types of cards that we need to use to create the wave deck and how many we randomly remove. We'll have 9Gs, 7Ls, 7Ss, 3Cs, and 5Bs. And those all stand for different cards, which I'll show you in a second. We also know that there are going to be two AIs. One is going to start on a longboard and will always swim out to the fourth channel spot and try and catch a wave there. The other one will start at on a short board and swim out to wave two or channel level two and try and catch waves from there. At the end of the game, if we were first place in the longboards, we'll move up five on the rank. Same thing for the short board. But if we get second, we only move up three. And if we get last, we actually move back three. So here we have the different wave cards. Now what you're going to see here is when we're on a wave actually surfing, these cards will denote which way we get pushed and by how much. So this one will get pushed towards the nose, the nose of the surfboard by one, versus this one we're pushed towards the back by two. Um, all of those, that's how those, ones, those cards work. The barrel card is a little bit different and you'll see how that works in the playthrough. What we're going to see at the top of the deck is the top of the deck, the cards are going to look like this. And we're going to know that this wave is going to push us 0 to 1. And it'll push us from either the top or forward or backwards. We don't know which one. But it does give us a little bit of information so we can make a determination of how much we want to move on our surfboard each round. So I'm going to set this up by grabbing the specific number randomly of these cards and then randomly discarding six of them. I've now set up our wave deck. There was a total of 31 cards that I put in it, and then I took out a random six, so we have 25 cards in this deck. 
This deck is our timer. So when those 25 cards are gone, game's over. So we have a total of 25 rounds. And you'll see the rounds go real quick in this game. I'm now going to set up our AI. And fortunately, for this game, the AI is very simple. Remember, one started on a long board and went out, always will go out to the channel four space to catch a wave. That's why I have this die here. You don't need to have that die. It's just to help me remember which one's going out to four and which one's going out to two. So the purple one starts on the short board and will always go out to two to catch a wave. And then we use these just to track. So when they catch a wave, they're going to draw a card from the top of the deck and they gain that as their point value. And so this is just to keep a track of where they'll put that. We'll place both boards right here with us on the shore. And just like us, at the beginning of the first round, they'll just come out to their specific spots. And then the next round, they'll try and catch a wave. Almost done with setup, next thing we'll want to do is grab our player deck, give it a shuffle, and we're going to draw five cards. So we'll start with a rail grab, and you can see this three here tells us a couple different things. If we're on a surfboard, we will move three towards the nose on our surfboard for our balance. And we'll score three points for this card as long as we don't wipe out on the board. <laughs> okay. So I get to keep that in my hand. I get to a total of five cards. So there's a one, one, two, three, four. Okay, this is perfect. Do you see that this is a four, but there's this icon down here? That means this card is only for short borders. If you have a long board, you immediately have to discard it and draw a new one. You can't hold on to any fours. So I'm starting with the long board. So I'm just going to discard that, redraw. And that's going to be the same for the AI. So when the AI scores points... If they draw a, a card that only works for a short board and they're on a long board, they don't get the benefit either. And I shouldn't say they don't get the benefit. They just immediately discard it and then draw a new one, just like I did. So now I get to do one mulligan at the beginning of the game. I can discard any of these cards and draw up to new ones. I kind of want a couple more higher numbered ones for scoring, but I do like my ones and having one of each. So I'm going to discard these two and draw two more. Okay, that's not bad. And that's another one. Perfect. So now this is my hand of five cards. And that's the setup for Tavarua. Now there's one thing I forgot, and that is a Stoke token. We start with one Stoke token. Stoke tokens can be used to add or subtract one or more than one if we use more than one Stoke token on any of these cards. So if I played this card and used a Stoke token, I could either change that to a two or to a zero. Other than that, I hope you guys are excited. Let's do some surfing. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.